Healthy dance is educational, um, focuses on the art of the body moving. Right. Unhealthy dance is sexual, it's explicit, it draws attention to the person as a sexual object. We have Tony and Celeste with us, and what's your company called? Dance Awareness. Dance Awareness. And can you tell us a little bit about Dance Awareness and your mission behind it? Absolutely. So Dance Awareness was founded by a former dancer and choreographer, and um, her name is Mary Bodden, and she has a passion to raise awareness about how kids are being hypersexualized mm. through dance. <clears throat> and it also bleeds into cheerleading and gymnastics and just you know the way our culture uh, tends to, to move kids to being objectified and um, so we're trying to raise awareness of how that happens in often in the dance industry not everywhere but you know it does and um, we, we, we want to stop ultimately where it leads mm -hmm. because it ends up leading to you know, a bad self-image, um, eating disorders, body dysmorphia, right. uh, pornography addiction, sex trafficking even, right. in, uh, some of the kids ending up in um, prostitution. Yeah. So we're, we're trying to work at the source and raise awareness about it so that we can slow the traffic to all of that stuff. I really appreciate having this conversation too because Renee and I both um, have backgrounds in theater and we absolutely love ballroom dancing and in the ca past couple of years we've noticed some of the same phenomenons that happen both in the theatrical realm and with dancing pageants and, and i've been involved in gymnastics and cheerleading with one of right. my daughters and, I, and the cheerleading world yeah it, yes. it is very Bonkers. it's alarming how especially children I would add young women into that, but when we're making really little girls look like they're 25, right. um, I think the sexual expectations we're subconsciously implementing into children is very Certainly. disturbing. And we have this conversation often. This is something that I wrestle with um, both in the dance world because for certain types of dance or ballroom dance, the attire changes, the hemlines start to rise. Yeah. I'm personally not comfortable wearing stuff like up to here with slits here, here, and here. Um, there's also the issue of co-ed boundaries, dancing with, um, at least in ballroom world, other men who aren't your husband or your spouse, um, even or even if you're single. You know, there's just there's a lot of great areas within dance, and constantly what Renee and I are tossing around is like, what's the line? You know, because it's an aesthetic, it's expression, but where is the line? drawn when is it turned to exploitation um so do you guys have a background in dancing or did you we do not have... no we don't <laughs> no it's I, we just we have a background in having little little girls we have four daughters just yes. as important so, yeah, that's it right there just right. As yeah. important. so we wanted to protect them um they're they're all grown now uh two of our daughters are married and we have four grandsons but um you know just having daughters and seeing the the way they're impacted by the culture, by media, um, by their kid, their friends at school. Um, it, we became aware of it, you know, as they were getting older. And um, we've been friends. We've gone to church with our founder Mary for a long, long time, and she's had a dance ministry. And and um, so, you know, we just we have a heart for protecting kids, and that's what we want to do. So, what was your turning point when you? decided to is something needed to change do was this an experience with your daughters and dance what did you observe that impacted you so profoundly you decided to create an entire sure awareness i assume is it is it a non-profit it is a non-profit okay, non yep. yep. yeah we're a registered 501 c3 i think personally for us it's it's comes just because of our own personal story I've got a background in addiction. Um, I suffered a porn addiction for a long time and uh, saw how devastating that was to our family mm -hmm. and our marriage and my relationships with my kids. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> so working through that, healing from that, recovering from that, now I, both of us spend time helping other people that struggle with addictions, um, mm -hmm. whether it's substance or behavior. And so that's, that's kind of where our heart is because 
the, you know, this the the dance awareness. Um, what we're trying to raise awareness for there that leads to all of the stuff that right. I ended up struggling with, and um, so we're trying to get it at the front end. Well, but just, why don't we why don't we talk about that process? Because I think it's really important. Say it a little louder, Renee. Why don't we talk about that process of how it leads to deeper things? Mm -hmm. um, I, I can speak as a former cheerleader mom. You know, when my little ten year old was getting dressed in her costume and why why did it have to be a half you know you want to address that? why did it have to be a half midriff kind of and then why do some of the dances have to be suggestive mm -hmm. right and it wasn't always her team but if you go to a competition uh, the other teams are you know in competition and sometimes it seems like a fight to see who can be more suggestive Right. So you would see these little 10 year olds doing moves that much like uh, that movie that came out. I, what was Cuties. it? Cuties. Yeah. Yep. Cuties. Um, and it, it, very uncomfortable. You yes. know, the, it, there's nothing cute about a, a right. eight year old or a 10 year old doing right. suggestive moves. Right. So it, was there a process? What would be the process? Because there's plenty of men in there. There's plenty of men watching this. Right. And, and the problem is it's open to the public. It can be anybody. Right. Um, so, I mean, the idea gets planted. Is there a process that might lead to further, you know, delving into pornography and, and furthering steps like that? So I would say, so I'm a Title IX coordinator at a university in California. Mm. And so I'm dealing with sexual harassment, sexual discrimination. And a lot of these young college women, that they're desensitized mm -hmm. to the objectification of women. Um, and I can speak towards women. I think it happens across the board with men and women gender types. Um, right, can I ask you, yep. what do you mean they're desensitized? They don't realize that they're they being objectified? Or I, they don't realize the damage that it does to them. Oh. So I think it's when it's we're when Mary's trying to address this from the dance when they're little teeny I think it's really important because I believe God built us like we have vacuums in our soul mm -hmm. and that we need to be filled by God right and only God can fill it but as you're a little girl and someone's applauding you right. and you're getting a lot of attention that right. feeds that need right. and it's a false it's met falsely by a physical problem we have we have a spiritual problem right and that the world tries to meet in a physical answer. Um, I think it, so what happens is it grows. Um, I try not to use too many examples from my work just because I would never want to hurt somebody by talking about it, but um, they, they don't even recognize, they get so accustomed to their identity being tied to what they look like yeah. and their sexuality yeah. that they don't even recognize it. Mm. You know, I always taught my daughters, you are worth waiting for and yeah. you need to cover up because you are gorgeous and you mm. are beautiful and nobody deserves to see you in that way because you're worth waiting for. You are worthy of a godly man that is going to embrace you in a, a biblical, mm -hmm. Christ-centered marriage. And honor you yep. as, as someone made in God's image. Right. right. Yeah. Which is beautiful. What so, type of dance is this um, that your daughter is, is it ballroom, ballet, contemporary? Oh, they all went, they, they it all, was, they was yeah. very young. I mean, it's all like they ballet. They started with and, tap and ballet. Yeah. <laughs> so as a mom, I recognized, um, and before I entered the university, I recognized you start, where well, you go to these recitals, and you start seeing the next stage that your daughters are gonna be entering into and the way they're dressing, mm -hmm. the way that they're dancing. Um, and it's a little bit, it's a little shocking. And so at a certain point, I took our girls out of dance right. just because I didn't wanna even deal with it. I'm surprised that is with ballet because if it's a classical ballet school. Right, but the, they would like take them to ballet and ballet is probably the safest dance. Right, right. Um, but they would take them and they kind of graduate them into more modern dance as right. they got older. Um, right. Because I think ballet becomes more specialized by your, your talent right. probably, right? Um, I was not a dancer, so mm. I can't speak to all of that. Me neither. Yeah, yeah that's okay. But I think as parents, it's just as important because a question I ask Renee so often, especially when we see really 
young girls and boys mm-hmm. um, who are wickedly talented at what they yes. do. It's not the dancing is the bad thing or even a leotard, but it's Correct. in which what you wear and how you move communicate something about you. That's right. right. What would be the point of places having a brand, you know, having different styles of dance and suggestive content versus modest if it didn't communicate something? But we don't understand how parents feel comfortable allowing an adolescent into into that I, I think from a parent standpoint and I, I'm speaking general generality a lot of them don't even realize that it's happening because they're so desensitized by the culture mm. um, everything we see on TV movies um, vid- music videos entertainers I mean think about the Super Bowl um, you know the halftime show and what oh, that yeah. looks like typically you know that yeah. stuff coming at parents just causes them to just accept a lower standard mm-hmm. of what um, a, a proper sexual presentation of yourself should be mm-hmm. in you know in our culture <clears throat> I, I was just we just had dinner next to a couple uh, night before last and we were talking to them and they the the mom said I took my daughter to a recital and I had no idea what was going to happen and when they came out and I saw the costumes and the makeup and the the way that they moved their hips and listened to the lyrics of the songs yes. I after that thing was over she said I have uh, two young sons they both covered their eyes and, and were ashamed to watch her because yeah. it was embarrassing to them right. and we took her out we're like she's not doing this right. anymore it's harmful so one of the things we work towards in our organization is try to get people to be aware of the difference between healthy dance and harmful dance and you know when you see it you can recognize it if Mm -hmm. if you are thinking about it when they're side by side right healthy dance is educational Mm -hmm. um, focuses on the art of the body moving unhealthy dance is sexual it's Mm -hmm. explicit it draws attention to the person as a sexual object Um, it, it lowers their own sexual sensi- sensitivity and value. And so we try to compare those things so people get an understanding and go, oh, okay, I, mm-hmm. I see what's happening. That's bad. We don't want that, you know? What would you say some of those are from each of your perspectives? Like when you now look at dancing, how would you define what is dubbed healthy, um, even edifying, aesthetically edifying versus pornographic if we can take it that far I, I can yep. let me answer that we actually have a, a, a handout that goes into detail of what that is I oh, really uh, yeah that's, that's um, wonderful which I, I'll give to you guys when we right, get done yeah, but we would love that it's things like um, unhealthy or harmful dance uses moves that um, you're you're looking suggestively into the eyes of who is watching you um, you know, it's that hither, come hither look mm-hmm. of, you know, a, a temptress. Mm-hmm. You're, you're using your, your hands to bring attention to different parts of your body. Yes. You know, you're, you're simulating sexual movements with your body. Um, I mean, you guys. You, you it's know, as far from classical ballet. Right. As you and and, yeah. but, and yeah. then you, right. you know, you take all of that stuff and that's in one category. And then you go to a ballet or a, or a jazz dance competition or you know the, where the movements are focused on. I mean you can on. have great ta- tab. I think what you're right. saying it depends on the school. <clears throat> they need to vet the school that they're yes. putting or the classes that Correct. they're putting yes. their children in. And especially when it's young kids that don't have the emotional maturity to understand there's a sexual component right. to what I'm doing. Right? Yeah. That's that's when it's really unhealthy. If you're a consenting adult, and you know, there's yeah. certainly and you want to pole dance, go well, pole right. right? Or there, I mean, who who am I to say there's not a place for a tango? For instance, oh no, I right? love a tango. I actually have been trying to find that boundary as tango is my favorite dance wait, wait, right we now. But, but and I'm that working a great, on the choreography for it. Isn't that a great thing to wrestle with? It you know, is, I mean, there's a spiritual is, component yeah. to it, right? I just had this conversation with someone, so I have a significant other, and I told them, I said, you know, if you want me to see the pre-choreography to this tango stuff, I'm happy to do that because it, I think it's not so much that these dances are what's bad, but it's in how we use them. Because tango, for example, is 
supposedly one of the more intimate dances. It's very close. It's it's also communicating something. But it's I love the story. dance. It is a great I dance. Lo- abs- it is an incredible dance. And it's and an incredibly technical dance. It is very technical. And so yeah. it's funny when I had a draw to it because I'm not really a physical touch person. I like to have some space. Like usually swing dancing school with me. But there was something about it that was really mesmerizing. But And my teachers know this. Like I'm absolutely zero way can I wear something like right. up to we, here. We and right. even the... Right. Even even the choreography or the technique, I think it can be sharp. It can be really, really precise without it communicating that I'm like slithering onto my married teacher right. who has right. little girls. That's right. You know, even if that isn't bothersome <clears throat> to the teacher, I personally have really weird visceral like boundaries with that. And he's and a very he's a very good teacher. Right. He teaches Renee as well. Yeah, and, and there are, we have very good teachers that don't yeah. they know where we they stand because right. we made it clear like i'm gonna wear this yeah. i'm not gonna wear that right um but there's a lot of people who older people my age who want to push the boundaries and really <laughs> honestly you know I, i'm sorry for the young people who come um but that's their choice because they're you know grown adults and yeah i mean if yeah. you're if you're an adult and you engage and again we're not dancers <laughs> You well, you're just as dance. important as valuable as parents and viewers as it well, is thank dancing, you. though. But right. but if Truthfully. you're adult and you're you know you're engaged in a dance, and you walk mm-hmm. away from that dance and you feel dirty, yeah. Well, something's wrong with yes, that. Yes, You know, is and very so wrong. you need to ask yourself a question: Why do I feel dirty like that? And I will tell you yeah. this uh, in defense of ballroom dancing: what I've experienced because I went in there with the boundaries. Um, we both had. Uh, problems with um, trusting men after not being able to trust yes. men anymore. Yes. So we were all ve- we were very very cautious. Yeah. Uh, but it is beautiful and it is a thing of joy. Yeah. And that is what makes me sad and what is being robbed from these young women, these young girls. Right. Yeah. Is that there is joy in dance, and it doesn't have to be sexualized right. and in fact when it isn't there's more joy in it because you have worked hard to attain beauty through technique uh, and you get artistry right. right you know and this is what's being taken away from mm-hmm. i i think all the sexualization takes away from that when i think it yeah. it it's teaching young girls but even people in my age bracket even if they're completely consenting it's essentially saying you're a bunch of body parts. You're a piece of me. You're right. the merchandise on display, right. and here's the hungry animals you're going to keep coming back. That's for. right. Even and even if it's not a room full of pedophiles, because oftentimes, <clears throat> sure, it's people who support the arts. It's still this idea that you are literally a pair of legs and a piece of meat. Right. Is what it's communicating. It's objectification. Right. right. And and when you see a you know you see one of these dance recitals. And the girls come out and they're dressed like that and they're 8, 10, 12, 14 years old. And you have men in the crowd that are catcalling them and whistling at them. Uh-huh. There's just something that's There's way off the rails way there. You know? off base. And that, that's what we're trying to bring awareness to and, and uh-huh. get people to be able to put some language around that and say, hey, this isn't, this isn't right. We need to do this differently because it's going to cause harm to these people children Mm -hmm. later on when they're 18 20 when they're married when they're trying to figure out what real godly sex is supposed to be like in their you know i i remember and i'm just going back to my cheerleading days as with my daughter and i would question constantly as a new cheer mom i've never been a cheer mom and i have you know other children but i would constantly question like why why does it have to do it be a two-piece outfit why i mean seriously why do they have to wear the false eyelashes you know right. when they're you know and i mean i understand i understand if you're on a stage with 3000 people you might need some a yeah. little makeup but why does it have to be this this much uh, but i do know i was really i i did hear two things that one this particular cheer level was they were very very seriously going to go back to the old-fashioned cheer outfits that were one piece which i thought okay 
hallelujah, that's a big step. Now, whether they've done that, I do not know. Yeah. But I remember at a big, large competition, a team walking out, and they were all in sweatpants. I mean, it, it, they weren't big, loose things, and they weren't super tight things. They were appropriate, right. and they looked good. And all you saw was the skill and the sheer right. hard work of these people, and it, it blew everybody away. Yeah. And not only that, it stood out. Like, yeah. oh, that's what clothes, clothing looks like, you know? Yes, so, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, do you all go around to schools? How do you uh, get your message out? We're not, we're not going around to schools. I mean, Mary's um, website, will start, they, she targets more like dance studios. Right. And, Where it needs um, to start. Yep, it yeah. starts there, because usually they get to cheer, right? Where they've been involved in dance yeah. before they ever get to cheer. So right. she's starting there and helping them have healthy dance yeah. and giving um, studios some some resources. resources. Thank so you. So we, we'll publish free printed resources, video resources, um, you know, frequently asked questions. We, our website is a place where parents can go and, um, you know, s start to understand what to look for in a studio when they, right. we don't want, you know, we don't want ki p parents to go, oh, dance is terrible. This is going to hurt my kid. I'm pulling right. them out. Right. You know, right. we love dance. We love the art. M you know, Mary is a, she built her life on dance. Right. Um, we want to help them find a place where they can be healthy in their dance and it can help them grow as a person um, and, and understand who they are and, you know, in God's eyes right. rather than being a piece of meat like, like you're talking about. Um, so our, our website is danceawareness.com. Um, we're getting, we're, we're in the process of putting a feature on our website where we'll actually have a listing of uh, you know what we'll call healthy dance studios right. places that you know we we believe are safe for your your child to go and learn right. um, that's going to be released april may of this year mm -hmm. but right now there's a ton of video content we have a we have a great last year we did a um, online video choreography contest where we had a, oh. a custom produced song that that we had done from a, a artist here in nashville and we had kids all over the world do their own choreography to this oh, song and wonderful. upload their video. Um, the winner got a $5,000 prize. And oh. um, it, so that's, those are the kind of things we do to promote healthy dance right. and, and just get people to know this is a problem. And right. we want people to, to, when they see that it's not going the right way, have the courage to step up and stop it. How effective have you found that your organization is? I mean, you are in tough, tough battle every January when the halftime show comes out like oh, you said right. I mean I, I turn <laughs> anytime I get, I get if I go to a Super Bowl party the family usually cuts the TV off yep because you have to yes yeah. <laughs> yep so how I mean do you think it's making an impact or is it slow it's steady it's gonna be slow and steady it's uh, um, she's trying to build awareness I think there's a lot of parents that put their kids in dance studios and they don't even think about they start them with ballet and they start them with tap and they aren't watching for where their daughter or their son are being taken um, and being Next April, she'll launch on the website where you can actually go across the United States and find healthy dance studios. Yeah. So they, she offers some resources for putting your children in dance. She found dance to be a really healing place for her own spiritual development. Mm -hmm. And the arts are healing for, you know, we use it all the time, art therapy all the time for helping heal people from being traumatized or damaged. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't want to just say don't go there like we do like we don't want to just turn off dance like we do the Super Bowl like as we do when halftime comes we just turn off the TV yeah. there's nothing edifying about it right um, but and so we don't want to do that with dance you know like I would ask you like why do you love the tango yeah like tell me why you yeah. love it yeah because I love I love it well we're talking two different ones right um, I mean, I'll, you know, I think it's a great question you ask, though, because that's something that I've had to force myself to ask you with any of the dances, right. and I think people should. 
for me personally, I love the sharpness of it and how it feels. I love that I'm not having to use my hips as much. Yeah. Um, I love the glide of it. I like the music, the tempo. Um, and there's a real aesthetic flair to it that you actually can achieve without having to like anchor your leg on someone the entire time. And my right. instructor knows a certain movements. I'm like, that makes me feel really uncomfortable. Or I've said to him a lot, I said, I feel really like naked <laughs> right now. Yeah. And it's, this is, they, I think he can sense when I feel uncomfortable, but I think what you guys are doing is creating the awareness in people so that they can then ask those questions yeah. so that they can then make those decisions. Yeah. And if they feel that gut instinct, they're not having to push past it. Right. Cause I think what happens in today's culture is people feel like they have to pick one of two extremes either. And I don't want to generalize and say all Christian dance ministries are mediocre, but there is a real sharpness and technique to so even beautiful. secular studios, ballroom dancing, ballet, right. that makes it, I think, edifying and glorifying to God and pursuing the excellence of that. Like right. you can, when you compare sometimes different dance companies and you have one that's only one version of modesty, if that makes sense, right. where it's, all right, cover in every layer. Right. And it's <clears> not <throat> as focused on the technique, the precision, the strictness, even the pursuit of excellence. Yeah. People can tell and people don't think it's as great as watching these works of sheer absolute, like, precision from something like somebody on point. Yes. And it's not knocking even, like, Christian dance ministries or saying right. the more um, modest or conservative ones are wrong in what they're doing. But I'm thinking you know, what if we took secular dance studios that teach the really hard technique, but we just have boundaries within that. Right. And well, respect and, that. and because yes. God made all of us so differently, right. you know, inside and out, mm. um, you know, just like the situation you were describing about you and your, your dance instructor, when you're saying this particular move, I don't feel comfortable right. with it. Right. So could you work through that to revise that dance so that yeah. you can feel comfortable yeah. and yep. still, right. you know, complete the work of art that you're working on, right? And when you do that, now you're being true to yourself and you're being true to the person God made you to be. Absolutely. That's what we're looking for, right? Absolutely. And you're not, you're not walking away feeling dirty. The people that watched your, you know, your performance are, are edified. God's glorified. Your instructor did his job. He's, you know, he's being true to himself. That, that's what we want to work towards rather than so everybody you, walking right. away feeling bad. And so you, with your nonprofit, do you also have like secular dance studios that you vet um, as far as looking for the pros and cons of it? So do those like, do, do that's any of them? Too, that's too big of a, a burger for us to eat right now. You know, just we're, tr we're trying to just get people to be aware of it. You yeah, know, we sure, don't have yeah. the, the bandwidth or the staff to, we're, we're a small deal, you know. We're I, I think that's good that you localize what needs to happen. At, yeah. And then honestly, you know, I never thought about the age of parents today who are taking their children in there, but they're considerably yep. at least 40 years younger than I am. So dance has changed, but still technique Yep. on the real good one. I still see parents who are even that young still wanting good quality dance moves for their children. Yeah. Yes. And well there's te yeah. and there's teachers out there that that's what they do. They mm -hmm. you know, they love God and they they want to help kids understand God and to glorify God and they want to um, you know, serve God in that way and use their talents in that way and man, we want to promote those people so mm -hmm. we do we're, we're going to you know we're going to add that feature and, and be able to help those people more one-on-one -on -one. but um, another thing that we're we're initiating this year we're calling the dance coalition and it's basically a volunteer online community of people that have a passion for this right. and uh, you know whether they're a dance studio owner uh, a choreographer a dancer a parent a concerned citizen we want them to be part of the conversation. Give us your ideas, give us your feedback. Um, you know, let's talk about this more as a community so that we can stop the problem. Yeah, and I, I do think it's important for us to recognize that good quality studios are good quality studios. They're not all Christian. There will be secular ones. Yeah. Right. There's still people who want right. quality dance. 
Um, our particular studio is, you know, a secular studio. Right. But, I mean, you know, for me, <coughs> every place we walk in is a Christian where to bring light. So, yay. That, yeah. That's good for us. Um, and I do think that children can even do that in a good quality studio. But well, And I think even with, I think awareness is so important. So even when you guys say, oh, we've started small, literally the mental awareness and yes. people rethinking having curiosity stirred, that's where it starts. And that's why I think even places like social media, that's why it's so powerful because people can echo their thoughts on any given yes. topic. Right. And having the initial, you having the bravery to even speak out on this where I guarantee you a million other parents are thinking it. They're just not necessarily speaking it or they exactly. are like we do or other people do among themselves, but and to create going, well, a structure. Something's wrong about this. What is right. it? Right. Yeah. And right. you're creating a structure. You're creating almost a boundary for people to filter things through. And starting with awareness, I really do argue, is one of the most crucial and important pieces to get to, you know, or to even start with. I think it is. Right. I don't think it's a small thing. Right. How has it changed your life working with this or organization? Say that question again. That How has it changed your life, your marriage, given the circumstances and the, the struggles that you I all think it gives through? us something to work on together. Yeah. We, we work on a lot of stuff together. Right. We love being together. Right. Um, but th this is the first time we've been to this convention. And this has been fantastic. I mean, just yeah. talking to people from all over the, the world. Yeah. And, uh, you know, having so many people stop by our booth and go, this is really cool. You know, yeah. we didn't, you're the only, this is so important and you're the only people that we see you are. talking you are. about. Like, I, we need I mean, you guys here. I, I kind of went up to her. I was like, what do you think about this? And she, we're both I like, I was yes. pumped. I yes. truly, truly. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we think that's really cool, but it's, it's a, it's a challenge. I mean, we're talking yeah. about a non-tangible raising awareness about something. You know, yeah. how do you even measure if we've done our job? Right. You know, um, other than we sit around and talk with folks like you that will allow us the platform. You know, so right. we're going to take every opportunity we can. Mary loves being interviewed. She's on all in all the right. different radio stations and t every TV spot she can get on. And um, well, just and tell as people. Anna Gray pointed out, social media. Because, I mean, I, the children that are sexualized on there. And looking up to the girls my age who were doing these things, these dances, wearing all of these, that's what, who they're then looking up to. Yeah. 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 Well, and it's not just girls. I mean, yeah. you know, just yeah. there's plenty of young boys that are involved in dance and their, their problem's a little different. We say that they get, the girls are getting hypersexualized, the boys are getting demasculinated yes, they are. right yes, they are. and and we don't want that either right. so we we want the boys to have a healthy sense of their masculinity uh, the women and the girls to have a sense of their femininity yes, agree, and completely. be who god made them to be right. you know yes and that's one of the reasons i love watching tango when i watch it i can't do it but there's a masculinity yes you can and right. a you femininity yeah. um there and i think it's a beautiful display of what God wants even in a marriage right. yeah. as you move together in a masculine and feminine as partners right. very different from each other but also unified yeah. and so yeah. I think you're doing exactly what God's calling you to do yeah. and doing that I appreciate with Tango it's funny when you asked that earlier I was like oh man they're probably like anti-Tango no. which is totally subjectively cool no right? but if you we, notice we love the Tango, we love the tango oh, but there's also a frame that tango. you have to keep there's hey a distance. God made yeah. sex you know yeah. And he made sensuality and yeah. and he made dance. I yeah. mean, think of right. how David danced and yep. he is, you know, he is not ashamed to see us yeah. dance. And I think it's so metaphorical how I see it too is with dance. It, I think very metaphorically, <clears throat> it reminds me of how the father leads us. And you're right, the gender roles it does depict. Yeah. Spiritually speaking, it yes. depicts that. For people who have come from mending a lot of deep pain trust issues yeah. things that have happened in our personal lives yes. it's felt right. not like a void filler but like this beautiful gift like heavenly gift mm -hmm. that god from a secular group from a secular group yes, yes. and feeling totally yeah. and, and that totally is exactly why she developed man. the dance coalition because yeah. it is bipartisan so yeah. it doesn't we're not coming from just a christian world right. view it is a view of we want to come together on this idea whether you're a Christ follower or you're not, yeah. that we want to see a moral compass in the dance yeah. and one that's dignifying to the human yeah. body. Yes. The dignifying, right? I love the yes. word. Well, Tony and Celeste, 
It has been wonderful chatting with you today. We're with you. slowly running out of time. We're very quickly running out of time, but I, we appreciate so much what you're doing and the awareness that you're raising. I know I'm definitely going to talk to you guys afterwards, um, but thank you for coming to our Moral Tea living room today. Thank and we hope you. that your message just expands beyond what you're, you know, what you could ever fathom. Yes. Well, we appreciate it. Thanks for having thank us. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye. Hey, I'm Renee Leonard Kennedy. And I'm Anna Grace Smith. And we make up Moral Tea Podcast. Yes, we're so glad that you're listening to us. And we want to encourage you to like and subscribe at Moral Tea Podcast on YouTube at Prey.com and Instagram at Moral Tea Podcast. Yes. <laughs> we will catch you every Monday. Bye. Peace. <laughs>